7.18, 7BU, it's Health Matters from Olveston's Full Life Pharmacy. We say a very good morning to Colin Wood. G'day, Colin. G'day, Colin. Glandular fever, and uh, most people have had glandular fever or know someone that has had that uh, dreaded disease. And there's been uh, several variations between hardly being sick and uh, to be bedridden. What is the common cause of glandular fever? Well, generally it's, quite, well, it's always caused by a virus called the Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and the reason that it's common is because it's, it's really easily spread through people's saliva. Um, and then once you are exposed to it and contract the, the virus, um, it incubates for about four to six weeks uh, before the symptoms start to appear. So quite often you can be spreading it around other people without actually realising that you have the virus. And so that tends to uh, propagate along quite nicely, um, or nicely for it, I guess. And I guess the other thing is that only certain people actually experience symptoms from um, glandular fever. So most people get exposed to it sometimes, but only about half the people actually get the, the symptoms of what we know as glandular fever. So that's the common causes of glandular fever. So Colin, what is it? Well, as the name suggests, it is a fever where you know, have a temperature or inflammation of the, and typified by a fever of the glands. So they're generally swollen, as most people would know. Um, it, it's caused by a virus, and the real name of the condition is um, infectious mononucleosis which is a bit of a mouthful, but basically, um, you know, that's its name, and it is quite infectious, as the name um, suggests. And it's sometimes just known as mono, and especially in other countries like the US, in fact, you'll hear them call it mono rather than glandular fever. To diagnose it, um, it needs a blood test, and generally the doctor, if you're having some of the symptoms, uh, the doctor do a, a blood test called a mono spot test, and that will conclusively say whether you have the infection or not. I was wondering if you'd be so kind to walk us through what are the symptoms of it. Yeah, sure. Well, normally they, they start slowly, like you know, you've got a cold or anything like that. Uh, start with you might feel a bit sick and have a bit of a headache, a few tummy pains here and there, just generally feeling a bit off. Um, and then that, it sort of um, glows over a period of a couple of weeks, and you get usually a really sore throat. Sometimes there's um, a rash or spots on your tonsils. Tonsils quite often um, get really large. Um, and the fever, you know, your temperature goes up and, you know, it's sort of, um, if it's a normal virus, that would normally um, subside within about a week. But with glandular fever, it tends to go on for, for more than that in a couple of weeks longer. Um, your glands, in particular lymph glands, and some of your organs, like your liver and your spleen, tend to become inflamed. And so that can be quite dangerous because if you're still active and playing sport and things like that, and particularly the spleen gets knocked, it can be, become ruptured and that can present quite a few problems. Um, I guess the other main symptoms, headaches and muscle weakness and, and just chronic fatigue, well not chronic fatigue, but real tiredness where you can't really get out of bed for a while. I'm thinking how we catch this uh, dreaded lurgy uh, through coughing and sneezing and uh, the other causes as well. Yeah, well I mentioned before, it's generally transferred uh, through saliva, so um, coughing and sneezing during cold season um, can make you... Uh, vulnerable, all of the people around you vulnerable. Um, sharing glasses and cups when you don't necessarily know you have it um, can spread it as well. We, um, I guess these days it's not as common where people don't share drink bottles and things like that for other reasons, but um, it's still possibly... Um, another one is, is through kissing, and it is actually known as a kissing disease, and given we just had Valentine's Day, that's possibly relevant now, but yeah, it's known as kissing because it is transferred uh, between people through, via their saliva, and if your immune system is a bit run down, if you had another cold or another infection, that can leave you more exposed to the, the, the sort of trials of glandular fever. So after Valentine's Day, beware, <laughs> Colin. Yeah, the damage might be already done. Could be now. already done by now, Colin. And what about the treatment for glandular fever now? Yeah, well, there's no real treatment to, to say, well, you've got glandular fever, here, take this. Uh, basically, it's um, treatment of the symptoms that each person has, and um, you know, whether it's paracetamol or aspirin to try and... Um, reduce the fever and, and the headaches and things or um, various other things. There's no actual vaccine that can actually um, stop you getting the disease or the virus or anything like that. Um, the throat gets really sore, so sometimes gargling with salt water or something like Diflam lozenges, which have an anti-inflammatory effect, can help to relieve some of the symptoms. Because it's a viral thing, you can't really take antibiotics to, to cure it as well. It's really just a matter of your immune system overcoming it, and most people do within a reasonable amount of time, although the effects of it can sort of linger on. Let's wrap things up this morning with the recovery and uh, some of the preventative methods as well. Yeah, well the recovery is really just that, it's you know, in bed for as long as you're um, unable to really function properly, and, and you know, going about it slowly, um, I know you're aware of some of the footballers that, that may have had glandular fever in recent times, and um, you know, some of those sort of expect to get back within a couple of weeks, but you know, it's, it's six to eight weeks. 
um, before they actually can get back on the park, simply because you, know, you need to let this um, thing, get, thing get out of your system and give your body a chance to recover, otherwise you can end up. And in some cases, it's thought to have actually be a precursor to um, chronic fatigue syndrome, which um, is a bit of a, a mis- mysterious disease, and we can perhaps talk about that another week. But um, glandular fever sometimes leads into that, so that needs to be something that's um, managed very carefully in terms of your fatigue and, and how quickly you integrate back into life. As far as prevention goes, you know, and we mentioned before about the methods of transfer, well, you know, avoiding sharing drinks and um, food utensils and things like that with other people when you know you have it. Um, I guess it's a bit hard to avoid kissing people, especially if you're a bit close to someone, but um, you know, I guess when you're struck down with a disease, you probably should um, refrain from that if you're able to. Uh, because the, the virus that can actually hang around in your saliva for, for a couple of months after you've actually had it, so uh, the chance to spread it sort of lingers on as well. And I guess finally, um, just boosting your immune system will help. Um, things like um, astragalus or vitamin C or you know, multivitamins and things like that um, can help your immune system recover from, from having the to deal with um, a viral infection like glandular fever. And if we've got any queries at all regarding glandular fever or any other topic, of course, uh, you have a web page, Colin? We do indeed, yeah, fulllife.com, um, is uh, our web page, and you can get us on our Facebook page as well. We'll just call us here at the pharmacy, and um, we can help you with, with all the symptoms and, and you know, treat the symptoms while you're recovering from glandular fever. Plus, you can leave a message for us at our health matters section on bestmix.com.au. I thought next week we'll touch on irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, I know that this one's a bit mysterious, but I thought we'd just go over some of the symptoms and um, what people can do with that, so we look forward to that. Colin Wood from Olberson's Full Life Pharmacy. Just look for the Purple Pharmacy and Health Matters.